current generation of 3D printers are packed with a lot of exciting new features. Most notably, Clipper firmware that gives us lightning fast print speeds. To make the most of this newfound speed, calibrating your printer to the material you're using is essential. Dialing in your temperatures, the flow rates, retraction, they all contribute towards a quality print. In this video, I'm going to step things up a bit by dialing in the pressure advance on the K1 Max using Creality Print as my slicer. So what is pressure advance and how is it going to help us get better looking and more dimensionally accurate prints? Pressure Advance in Clipper is designed to compensate for the side effects of instant speed changes that occur during high speed printing. To break it down, if you've ever printed a calibration cube, which, or anything with sharp corners for that matter, you've probably noticed bulging corners. We have too much filament being extruded out in the corners and not enough filament extruded out as the printer starts to pick up speed again. Pressure that is already built up inside of the nozzle during the fast printing will continue to ooze from the nozzle as the print head slows down to change directions. This causes the bulging in the corners. Now, when the print head has made its direction change and starts to build up speed again, there just isn't enough molten filament in the nozzle because it all oozed out and the pressure needs to build back up again. This will cause under extrusion as the speed transitions from slow back to fast. With pressure advance, we can tune our printer extruder to the right amount of filament during acceleration and deceleration so the corners are sharp and not rounded and our straight segments are not under extruded. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to find the correct pressure advance value for your printer and material with Creality Print to equalize the flow of the filament along the extrusion path. This video is sponsored by my friends at PCBWay. Did you know that PCBWay offers 3D printing? Hobbyist or professional engineer, PCBWay has you covered. With state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities, PCBWay offers 3D printing services with fast turnaround times. Simply upload your CAD design, select from a variety of material options, and get a budget-friendly quote. Turn your visions into reality with PCBWay.com. Tuning our pressure advance is going to give us sharper corners, less oozing, less blobs, and less zits on our prints. This can better be demonstrated by looking at this lined pressure advance test. This is a series of lines that test different pressure advance settings. Those value settings are shown here on the right side of the print. On the left side, we are printing at slow speed. When we get to the mid section of the line, we are printing at a fast speed. And finally, on the right side of the printed line, are the yeah the right side of the printed lines, we are printing at slow speeds again. I'm going to focus my attention on the bottom line. This is with zero pressure advanced, none. It should be a strike consistent line width all of the way across, but obviously, it's not. We can cl clearly see under extrusion where our print tran speed transitions from slow to fast here on the left side. Look how the line tapers from thin, then back to a normal printing width. There is some over extruding when the printer changes speeds from fast to slow here on the right side. This is why you see bulging corners when printing cubes. Just past the blob, you can see the printed line tapers again from wide back to its normal printing width. The idea of this test is to find out what line is the most consistent from start to finish. Match that line up at the numerical value on the right side and that is your pressure advance setting. Or you could use that value to narrow your pressure advance value even further and rerun the test using that value to really dial it in. Sadly for us, Creality Print does not have this type of test, perhaps in the future, but Creality Print does offer us a method to calibrate our pressure advance. I'm Bill. Let's jump into Creality Print, 
Dial in the pressure advance setting and get your printer pushing plastic. Okay, so we're in Creality Print. And make sure you're using Creality Print, not Creality Slicer. Uh, Creality Slicer is outdated. It does not have the calibration options. And Creality Print, it has the profiles that are more in tune with the full line of the Creality Printers. So let's go ahead and get started. And this could not be easier if we tried. All we do is we come up here to Calibration and select Pressure Advance. Now we're hit with a dialog box here with a few options. We'll go through those real quick. The extruder types are DDE for direct drive extruder and Bowden. So for my K1 Max or the K1, if you're doing that, uh, you want to select direct drive extruder. The Bowden, if you had an older Ender 3, an Ender 5, something that's running in a Bowden tube setup and is running Clipper, you would want to select that option. In the method, there is only one, ver one method available, which is the PA tower, pressure advance tower. They used to have the pressure advance line flow, which I showed you earlier. I wish they still had it. I'm hoping they bring it back. Creality, if you're watching, bring it back. Okay, so let's get down to the settings. We're going to start our pressure advance at zero. None, nothing at all. And we're gonna to continue to print until our ending pressure advance is currently set at 0.1. I'm going with 0.15. It takes it up a little bit taller. It's a better range of a test, in my opinion anyways. The PA step, pressure advance step, is currently set at 0 0.002. I'm gonna leave it there. Some people like to change it to 005. Um, what this does is as we print, the pressure advance is going to start at zero, then it's going to increase by 0 0.002. Then it's gonna go up and add another 0 0.002, which takes us to 0 0.004, 0 0.006, and so on, until we get to the end, which is 0 0.15, 0 0.15. So let's go ahead and we're gonna click the OK. And there's our tower, that's it. Now you might wanna know where this uh, Z seam is. Uh, it, obviously it's always gonna be on a corner, but you don't wanna measure your results along the Z seam. It's easier to identify them on the Z seam, it's great for that. But when you actually take your measurements, you're gonna to wanna to do them on one of the other corners. Personally, I like a squared corner, but it doesn't always give you that. Sometimes you run this and there is zero change. You're already good to go. Um, but let, let's go ahead and we'll print this out and see how we do. Now I'm using land printing. The one thing I don't want to do is check the print calibration. I'm going to leave that off. I want my G code to do it all on its own. Let's go ahead and we'll print this out and we'll see what our results look like. I have the test print. And what we do now is take a good look at it. In some cases, it's hard to notice the difference from the bottom to the top. You need to look hard for bulging in the corners. Sometimes it'll look like a taper along the edge running from the top to the bottom. Sometimes it'll be chewed up like this one. Sometimes it'll be chewed up at the top and the bottom, but fine in the middle. What I'm seeing is a little bit of a bulge down here along the bottom. That's showing me some over extrusion. Then it seems to straighten out for a bit before I get into this really rough area near the top. We'll grab the calipers and we'll take a measurement just where the bulging stops. And let's see what we're getting. Looks to be about 14.24. Let's jump back into Creality Print and update our material profile. Okay, so we're back into Creality Print and what we wanna do is go back to Prepare and we're going to our material. And we're gonna go down to Manage, make sure you're on the right material 
and we're going to do a little bit of math for our, our pressure advance setting. And the way we do that is you take what you started with. In our case, when we set this up, we had a range starting at zero and going up to 0 0.15. So we're taking zero plus what we measured. In this case, it was 15.24. And then we're gonna multiply that by the steps that we used when we set up our test, which was 0, 0, 002. So we got zero plus 15.24, which is 15.24 times 0 0.002. And that is gonna give us 0 0.03048. I'm gonna change my pressure advance to 0, 03. They do say it's a little better to go on the short side, like reduce this a little bit if you wanna be safe. I think I'm okay with 0, 03. I'm gonna give it a test and see how I do. We'll save our material profile, and that's all there is to it. So there you go. Not much to it. Now I, I ran a calibration cube to see if it made a difference, and it did. The corners are a little bit sharper. I'm not seeing any bulges like I did earlier. The entire process was pretty easy, but I'll be the first to admit that it would be nice for Creality to put the line flow test into the slicer. It's so much easier. If your printer has LiDAR or auto calibration, you could let the printer take care of most of this for you. If not, well, then this simple process is a great way to dial your printer in for better looking and more dimensionally accurate prints. I hope you found this information useful. If you did, hit the like button and let me know down below in the comments. Smash that bell so you'll be alerted to new content in the future. Live your life one layer at a time, and if you haven't done it yet, please consider subscribing.